Before we get started here, you need to go into Blackboard and download the Pawn file. Once you've done that, put it on your desktop and we can just open it like any other file. So just go to File Open or just click Open, go to Desktop. So right now, it's on my desktop but I can't see it. And that's because it's not a Mastercam X file. So to see it, I gotta go down here and I can actually pick what it is. So it can be any of these files or I can just go to all files. So there it is. This particular file is a Parasolid. So I'm gonna click open and there it is. So right now I'm in design mode. So I'm not in mill or lathe. Doesn't really matter at this point. I'm just gonna go to isometric so we can see that this is a solid. So there it is. That's how it's oriented. So we really don't want it oriented like that. I need to rotate it. So I'm going to go to top view and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees, well, negative 90. So it's aligned with the X axis. So to do that, I'm just going to go rotate, drag a window around it, enter, and I'm going to rotate this negative 90. So I don't want to copy it. I want to move it. So there it is. Okay. All right, so there it is. I have my chess piece aligned properly. But there's one more thing I want to do. I don't really want to work with a solid. We haven't gotten over that in class yet. So I just want to make this 2D geometry. So because it's a symmetrical part, it doesn't have any internal features. Um, all, all I need is actually the silhouette of this part. So to do that, I'm going to go to top view. I'm going to go to create silhouette boundary. I'm going to clear these colors. There we go. So create silhouette boundary. I'm going to click anywhere on this solid and it should all be selected. Hit enter and you can leave all of these options alone. I'm just going to hit the check. So now you can see I have this green border here and that's what I want. I don't really care about the solid, so at this point I'm just going to delete it. Or you can put it on a different level and hide it. So there, it's gone. So now I also have some lines in here. You may or may not have those, depending on your options. So I'm going to go to Quick Mask Color, click the gray color, and hit the check. Now they're all selected. I'm just going to delete those as well. So now all I have here is some 2D geometry rotated around. But right now I still I still have too much information. All I really need is one quadrant. So I'm gonna draw a line from the origin out some arbitrary distance. I'm gonna trim off the bottom half of this because I don't need it. So trim, trim divide, trim those two lines, shift click, delete the rest of it. So this is all I need. I can delete this line too. I don't really need it. So now one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the actual tip of this part to the origin. So to do that, move to origin. And I'm going to make sure I pick at the end of this. And there it is. Clear the colors. So now I'm ready to put this on the lathe. So to do that, I'm going to go to machine type, lathe. And I'm just going to choose the default lathe. So there we go. So now my operations manager over here, I've got machine group one, toolpath group one, it's a lathe. And if you look down here, my axes automatically changed to Z and plus D. So this direction is plus D, this direction is plus Z. So right here's the origin, which means my part is in negative Z plus D space. There's one more thing I want to add before we rough this out, and that's just kind of a relief here because our stock's a little bigger than this part. So I'm just going to grab a line. I'm going to draw this out 0.2. And I'll apply that. So there we go. So we can go ahead and make some tool paths. Before I do that, I want to set up my stock. So properties, stock setup, stock properties, 
the OD is one inch and the length will, will make it uh, 10. So it's just a, a long piece of raw stock. Now my chuck jaws, I'm gonna leave all of this the same. I'm gonna use an OD1, diameter is 1.0 and we'll make the Z negative three. Hit the check, hit the check. There we go. So that looks good. I'm ready to start making some toolpaths. So the first toolpath we're going to do is a grooving toolpath. So toolpaths, groove. Yes to the new NC name. You can uh, chain this multiple ways. We're just going to use an, a normal chain. Hit the check. And we're going to chain from this tip here all the way to this kind of lead out and hit the check. So we need to choose our tool. So you want to choose a tool closest to the one you have, then you can modify it if you need to. So this T4444 right here should work great. On the machine that is tool four, offset four, everything's four. And we'll leave these feed rates and spindle speeds alone. As far as the groove shape, we'll leave it at 90. Roughing parameters, stock clearance is fine. Step over, let's go at 20. Back off, let's make it zero. And we'll leave five thousandths in the X, five thousandths in the Z. We wanna cut the chain direction. You got a few options here, but chain direction is what we want. And we can leave all of this alone. Now the groove finish parameters, turn them off, hit the check, and there we go. Our part is roughed out, the tool grooved it, the only thing it didn't get hit was this right here. So we'll just let our finish tool take care of that, and we missed this chunk, but our finish tool can get that too. So if you look down here, this is what our part is going to look like at this stage. So now we're going to do a finish pass. So tool paths, finish. We're going to use the same chain so I could hit last, but I'm just going to chain it again. So click there and click there. All right. Now we're going to use a pointed finish tool. This uh, tool 2121, 35 degree finishing right hand is the one that's closest to the one we have and this is tool two in our machine we will go to finish parameters so because we have this kind of area that we need to rough out and finish we'll take a few finish passes so we'll do a finish pass of ten thousandths and we'll do three of those see if that does it for us now there's a couple important boxes on here you might need to edit and that would be lead in lead out so this is the direction it's going to lead into the part so it's going to come in from here and lead in that way which is fine for what we're doing and then the lead out if i can move this nope lead out is going to come out of the part like this so that's good too so we can leave those alone but the plunge parameters right now will not allow us to get into this pocket here. So click on plunge parameters and you have a few options. You can plunge in both directions or plunge only in one of the directions. We're going to just plunge in both. And we'll give it a clearance angle of three degrees. That's fine. So we'll hit okay. Hit the check. All right. So our part is finished. It's roughed out and finished. We have a really nice service finish on it. So let's go ahead and cut the part off. So cut off is probably the easiest tool path. We we'll go to tool paths, cut off, and all you need to do is click the point where you actually want to cut off, which would be right here. So we're going to use the same tool that we used to groove with. So tool four, everything looks good here. Cut off parameters. Let's do it from the stock. Everything looks pretty good here. I'm going to hit the check, see what happens. All right, cut it off. So let's watch this simulate. All right, so here we go. All right, so it looks pretty good. Now realize that on our lathe, 
it's not going to look like this with the tool coming from the back like that. It's actually going to look more like if I could rotate there, like this. But it's the same exact tool path, same axes. So let's watch this the way it would look on our lathe. All right, it looks good. So remember, I'm just I just rotate it around. So this is what's going to look like on a slant bed lathe, but on our Haas lathe, it'll look like this. So there we go. All right, everything looks good. So before I ran this part, I would go through and make sure I have my speeds and feeds set based on the chart. Also, your step over and your finish passes, make sure that those take off the correct amount of material. So check that stuff before you post process. Then all you gotta do is hit the G1. So let's go ahead and do that. Just gonna put it on my desktop. So because we use the default post, there's one thing we need to do po after we post it, and that is edit the tool change location. So you can do that in Mastercam, but just to be safe, I'd rather you do it in the actual code so that you know that's what's gonna happen. All right, so here's our first tool change, T4, O4, so tool four, offset four, that's what that means. And we're gonna go to the next tool change. So I'm just gonna go up here to tools and hit next. So right here's our first tool change and we have a G28 UVW. So if I delete the UVW, I just have a G28, it'll take my tool to the home position, which is back near the tailstock, and it'll do a tool change there. That's okay, it just takes a while. So if you wanna change that, you can go on the machine and actually measure to a safe distance. So for example, you might put a G0 X two and Z 12, I don't know, something like that. That might take you far enough away to do a safe tool change, but you're gonna to wanna to actually measure that before you put those numbers in there. And then just go to the next tool, same thing. Either delete the UVW and leave the G28 or delete the G28 and put a rapid location in there. And then same thing, next tool. So there it is. Make sure you do that for all of those. If you leave this UVW in there, you'll get an error on the machine and it will stop your tool right there and you're gonna have to restart your program and delete them. So make sure those are done before you go and run it. And uh, just be very careful that you have those locations correct in there. So in the next video, I'll actually show you how to run this in the machine, set up the tools, and uh, we'll make one of these parts.